Well, hello there, and welcome to my studio. I'm Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist, and I work in lots of different mediums and make all kinds of different things. And I want to say a special welcome back to those of you who somehow got the idea in my last video, the social media breakup, that I was leaving YouTube. And I think you must have misheard something or didn't watch the end or something. But if you're interested in finding out what I'm doing with social media in 2024, I will put a link in the doobly-doo to that video. But today is an actual tutorial. I'm going to be coloring some latte in different mediums because it's cuddle up day and drinking something warm sounds like a good thing to do. Each of the three sketches today are going to be about three, three and a quarter inches or so. I made two circles using a compass and then colored in a cup. For the latte, which is really what we're gonna focus on, not the cup itself, I'm just taking a very light marker first and sketching in a rough design. And this is instead of doing it in pencil because pencil can drag when you're going over it with alcohol markers because especially with light colors, they'll just make streaks of gray all over the place. So I use kind of a skin tone, very light skin tone there so you could see it. You could do it in something lighter if you want. And then switch to a yellow kind of color, YR23. The yellow and the peach are going to show through in some of the foam and give it a little different color than rather than just all the browns that are going to be used on top. So it doesn't even matter that this under part is on the messy side because there's going to be a lot covering it up. So I'm going to start with an E35. I wasn't sure if this was the perfect right color, but I wanted to go from darker on the left side to a bit lighter on the right side. And what I find in drawing latte is just go slowly and build up your colors. So start light and then get darker. There is going to be some darker on here, but I decided this was going to be kind of the middle dark. And then I'm going to switch to an E33, which is going to give me a little lighter of a dark color. I wanted to get a little bit more of this E35 in here before I switch over because I wanted some of the little swirls in the foam to have some dark sections in between them, that sort of thing. So I got the E33 out and that starts giving me that overall kind of color shift from the dark on the left side to the lighter on the right side. And I'm even coloring over top of some of this foam, really the little heart in the center can be the only thing you leave because it's real easy to get carried away with your marker colors. But all the layering of the color pushes some of the phone back underneath the surface of the coffee so it starts actually looking more realistic. And before we continue, let me bring you a word from our sponsor. This latte video is brought to you by the Fresh Brew Alcohol Marker Class over at art-classes.com. In this brand new course, which is a level three, an intermediate course, you will learn how to draw three different cups of coffee. One is overhead, one is a somewhat side view, and the other is a more angled view. In each one of them, we will be exploring how to layer the colors, how to recognize the shapes, how to look for where one area begins, the other ends, how to make that spoon look like it shines, how to make the reflections sparkle. You are going to have so much fun in this class. You're going to learn a lot that you can apply to other drawings of coffee cups. So if you're interested, there's a link in the doobly-doo. I now return you to our regular scheduled latte video. Oh, my silly marketing radio voice. <laughs> I hope that was not too jarring for you. But I figured if you are watching a video on how to draw a latte foam, you might be interested in drawing cups. In the class, there are no lattes. There's just coffee. But you know, now that you know how to draw the latte foam, uh, just a note, if you try to draw the latte foam on a cup that's not a direct overhead view, you have to distort the hearts and everything because those will also be at an angle. So what I'm doing here is just kind of continually playing around and refining my shapes putting in a few darks 
and trying to blend in some areas so I get softer kind of transitions between some of the colors. I'm not too worried about making the heart perfect. So if your heart is not perfect, you know, a latte foam is not going to be perfect anyway. So here I'm using an E29 because the side closest to the light is going to be the darkest side. So I wanted some dark up in that corner. But also remember the shadow is going to cast across the foam. So you may need to darken a little of the foam too, not just the coffee. And then at the very end, I use my colorless blender to soften out the areas that are especially right around the whites. The colorless blender won't erase it all the way back to white, but it'll get it close-ish. And it looks fantastically like a swirl on a latte. So that's the alcohol marker version. Now for what I think is my favorite version out of these three, you can decide which one you like better. The colored pencils on Stonehenge paper totally gave me the texture of what you can find on a, the top of a cup of coffee. And I don't drink coffee, like that's not my thing. I, you know, if I go to Starbucks or to our local coffee shop or anything, for me it's like a hot chocolate or a cider or something. But I, I love watching them make latte art. I love watching videos on latte art because it's just fascinating to me that you pour this thing in this liquid and it just makes these shapes. So this one is done entirely with two colored pencils. There is a, looks like the number on here is 1034 Goldenrod and Sienna Brown 945, both in Prismacolor. But you can use any kind of goldish pencil for this first layer. So basically what I did was sketch in the design with the Goldenrod pencil. And I put like a heart at the top and then a wider heart underneath of it and a still wider heart underneath that. Just kind of nested them and then made some almost leaves, I guess, that kind of go up and curl into this thing so it all looks like one big heart. I saw a lot of variations of this design on the Googles. So if you want to go find some designs, rock on and see what you can locate for some inspiration. You could also go to a coffee shop and get some inspiration. That, by the way, is where I recorded the sound here. I went to my local coffee shop and turned on my recording device so that I could have a little coffee in behind what we're doing here today. We can pretend we're sketching in a coffee shop. So I'm taking the Sienna Brown and reinforcing some of the darks that I want on the interior of all of that yummy foam, but not everywhere. Don't put it absolutely everywhere because that's not what latte foam looks like. It's kind of mishmash and it goes from dark to light in all different kinds of ways. So again, I'm putting the shadow on the side kind of to the upper top and left where the shadow is going to be cast from the cup or from the lip of the cup onto the foam. So it's going to be darker up there. And I'm just going to use massive numbers of layers of this because when I do layers, I can slowly build it up over time. Instead of trying to find one pencil and then pressing really hard, my hands also don't like pressing really hard because they get tired. Uh, by the way, you may be wondering what the glove is doing on my hand. I have a spider bite on that hand. And I, I'm like one of those people, if somebody has like a, a big weird thing going on on their, their hand, I get like really freaked out and I can't watch the videos. So <laughs> I just thought, well, I'm gonna wear my glove today. So you don't have to look at my spider bite. At least that's, I'm assuming it's a spider bite. I don't know. It's going away, but not fast enough. So I'm continuing to build up the layers. And as I get toward the end here, I'm going over top of each one of these dark sections and going in circles with my pencil. So I start getting almost a bleeding out of the dark lines because I want them to be soft. And then the very last step was to use my electric eraser to lift up some of those spots that got a little too dark. So an electric eraser on the Stonehenge paper works phenomenally. So there is the latte in colored pencil. The final latte is going to be in watercolor and this one the design is going to end up being a lot simpler than the other two because it's a little tough to get all that kind of detail in in watercolor but you can certainly try it. I'm going to initially just paint in a rough heart 
using my brush, not worrying about drawing it, drawing it in pencil first. I could do that, but then I could trap some pencil under there. So I figured I'm just going to paint it very thin yellow ochre paint because this can also serve as some underpainting as well. But I want that center part, of course, available for a heart. I'm going to dry it completely. And that's going to mean the next layer, I can really get into painting all kinds of shapes of swirls. So if you're going to do a complex design, this would be the time to do it. But I also decided in here that I wanted to change the shape of my heart. And look how I can do that when I'm staying very light with my layers. That yellowish part at the bottom doesn't matter. If I start painting over it to carve my heart into a different shape, I can totally do that and use some of that underpainting to enrich the, the various layers of the entire latte itself. So I got that layer in and then dried it and then started using some thicker and darker pigment. I added to it, uh, to the yellow ochre, I added a little bit of transparent red oxide or you could add some burnt sienna. If it's too bright, then add a blue to it to kind of dull it down. And I'm just painting right over all of those underparts. So see how it's developing that kind of nice foam under the foam sort of thing? I got out my liner brush to even add a few very tiny lines, but you can use like a number two brush to do that. And then I went in with some darker pigment. So again, using that transparent red oxide, almost full strength here and creating the shadow part that goes behind the lip of the cup. And then I'm just kind of making more shapes in here. You can stop before you get to this point. You don't need to make it this dark, but different kinds of drinks are going to be made to different depths of color. So, you know, just kind of play with it and have fun. These would be great for Valentine's, by the way. Just put one of these, like cut out a circle and hand somebody a circle with a latte on it and then tape a gift card to the back of it so they can go get a latte. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, so I'm just kind of painting some shapes on here. You can see the brush is just kind of making these nice wiggly lines. And then as I'm finishing, I'm using thinner paint to fill in in between the lines because that's going to smooth it all out a bit and leave the heart being the thing that's floating in the center without quite as many of the white parts around the outside edge. But look how much it looks like foam that sunk into the coffee. That was kind of what I was looking for because with watercolor, that's almost an easier look to do than trying for some of the fancy things done in the more controllable mediums because water watercolor is not always as controllable. So reaffirming the shadow up at the top side with some dark pigment and there is the watercolor version and reviewing the colored pencil one there's still pictures of these on my blog if you want to go see that and yeah don't forget the fresh brew class is waiting for you i don't serve coffee in it but we do have some of the ambient sounds of the coffee shop that you're hearing in this video i will see you guys later on uh like tuesday next week next video is coming up for letter writing week. I'll see you then. Take care and create something every day. Bye.